Hi, my name is Katia, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the APCSA free response questions to the 2022 exam. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to best approach these problems, how to code them, and ultimately, I'm going to be looking at the scoring guidelines. So the APCSA exam is split into two, the multiple choice section and the free response section. Um, it's split evenly, so you get 90 minutes per section. And the free response section, you have four questions, but these questions do have multiple parts. And so usually it might take you the whole time to finish. So during this, you're gonna be writing your answer either in a, currently they're doing it online as well. So let's take a look at the first question. The first question, this is regarding classes, is gonna ask you to finish coding a small snippet of code for a single player video game. So in this game, um, as it says, a player attempts to complete three levels and a level in the game is represented by the level class. So let's take a look at the level class first of all. It has two functions, goal reached and get points. Usually the exam won't tell you the specific implementation, so you're gonna just be calling these functions from another class usually, and they give you everything that you need. So we have a goal reached and get points. This one returns true or false, and this one returns a number. So keeping that in mind, they also give us a class that represents the whole game itself. In this class, we have three variables. We have each level, we have a constructor, we have a method that returns true if it's a bonus game, and then we have play, which simulates the game. We have get score, which is what we're going to be implementing. And we also have play many times, which is what we're going to be implementing as well in part B. So let's see, part A. Part A is going to ask you to write the get score method. This re will return the score for the most recently played game, and each game consists of three levels. The score of the game is computed using the following helper methods. The is bonus class, is bonus method of the game class, which we looked at, the goal reached method of the level class, and the get points method of the level class. We are going to compute the score based on the rules here listed. So. Um, you get the points from the current level if the goal is reached and if you have completed the previous level. The score is the sum of all three levels. So, and then lastly, if this game is a bonus game, then the score for the game is tripled. So when you think about that, and we're writing a method that is going to be basically looking at all of these things, we're gonna be using a lot of if statements because first we need to check if level one points are earned, we have to check if level two points are earned, if level three points are earned, and so on. And as we do that, as we check each thing, we add each individual level's score to our total score. And then finally, we want to check, as it says down here, if the game is bonus. And if it is, we're going to triple the score. So let's start coding it. So public int get score. First thing we want to do is we want to have create a variable that stores our score throughout the method and then at the end we're going to be returning it. So let's make an integer score, set it equal to zero, and basically this will just keep track of what we do to the score. First thing we have to do is we have to check if level one's goal was reached. If it is, we add level one's points to the score. So we check if level one got goal reached. And if this is true, we want to add, or it will actually just equal because we start with zero, but we will add the points to our score. So level two, on the other hand, has another added criteria. It will only be added if both level one and level two's goals were scored. So because it's taking what we have already checked and adding something else, we will be staying in this if loop and we are gonna just add another, um, basically the same thing, but with level two. Level two dot goal read. And if that's true, we're gonna add to the score using a compound operator on um, level two dot get points. So again, with level three, um, because it is going to take the previous two and add one more set of criteria, we're gonna put it inside of both if loop, if statements. So here we're gonna say if level three dot goal reached. So if the goal got reached, we add the score to the total score. So level three dot get points. And notice we're using all of the methods that they have given us, goal reached to make sure we reach the goal and then get points to grab the specific amount of points from that level. So yeah, now we have a score that has all the points earned for level one, two, and three using the criteria given. 
And all we have to do now is check if it's a bonus game. If it's a bonus game, um, so if is bonus because it is a method in the class and you call it straight in here. So if it's a bonus skin, um, then you're going to multiply the score by three. And that's it. And all we have to do now is return because it is a method that returns an integer. We just return the score. Turn. The question also gives you a table with a bunch of test cases. You should usually, if you have extra time um, or just for checking it, you should look through each um, scenario and make sure you, that's what your code would, would output. So follow and run through your code with these values and make sure that that is what you get. So yeah, this also just explains the question a little bit further. Okay, so for part B, we're gonna be writing the play many times method. Um, this is gonna simulate the play of number games and return the highest game scored. So if four of the plays that are simulated um, earn scores of 75, 50, 90, and 20, then it should return uh, 90. So play of the game is simulated by calling helper method play. If it's only called once, followed by multiple consecutive calls to get score, each call to get score will return the score earned in the single simulated play of the game. This means that we need to call play and then get score, and then we need to um, call get score and then make sure that we are playing the game before we grab the score. So we are going to be coding the play many times method. Um, usually what the exam will say is that the get score works as intended, which means that even if maybe your logic isn't quite right in the previous part, um, you're not gonna lose points if, it, if it's wrong and it outputs the same thing. So your mistakes won't be carrying over. Yes, so make sure we are calling play and get score appropriately. So for this question, we are going to first we're going to put we're going to create a temporary variable um, to store the max points earned in one play of the game. So we're going to call it max equals zero. And it's just going to be zero because at first it's only zero. Now we're going to be running a for loop. So because we are playing this as many number of times as the user wants, because we're passing in a parameter, we are going to run a for loop until that number. In that for loop, we're going to be running the game. We're going to be getting the score. And then if the score, we're going to be comparing the score to the max. And based on whatever value, we are going to either change the max or keep it as it is. We're going to write a for loop for integer i equals zero. i is less than none. So this will run from zero. It'll be the same number. We're going to implement i, and in here we're going to call play. So play is going to happen. Then we're going to get the score of that, that round. So int score equals get score. And then we're going to compare score to max. So if score is greater than max, we're going to set max equal to score. And finally, this um, determines if the, so if the score is greater than the max that we've been given, that means our new play has the high score and we're going to update our high score so it's basically like um you're making you're checking which of the um, plays has the highest value finally because again we need to return something uh, we need to return max that is our final statement return max and that's it um so that's all you have to do for part b now we're going to take a look at the scoring guidelines so the scoring guidelines for the APCSA, um, basically you have you get no penalty for extraneous code, spelling where there is no ambiguity, so it can't be like inferred from context. Context, so like spelling array versus array with a double R, private or public missing on a local variable, some other things missing the semicolon it's not that bad um you really only lose points if you mess up with some of your logic so if you have if you're returning something where the method returns a different data type or if you have some issues with methods or variables maybe you have like local variables that you are calling from a different function you can't have that so it'll they'll penalize you for mistakes that are more to do with logic than your syntax. Question one, the scoring criteria, you get one point. Um, if you call get points, goal reach, and it is bonus for the first part, you get a point if it determines that points are earned based on goal reached values. 
So if you're calling it and you're determining the score based on those values, you get a point and you won't get that point if you don't use a nested if statement. So this is going back to the part of the question that asks you for each stage having completed the previous stage. And if you don't take that into account, um, they won't give you credit. So make sure you're reading the questions very thoroughly. You get another point for regarding the update of score based on the is bonus return value. Basically, if you are multiplying by three because it is a bonus game, you get a point. And finally, you get a point if you initialize and accumulate appropriate score. Um, that's just the logic of your whole thing. And if you calculate it wrong, you don't get the point. Um, or if you don't triple it, again, you don't get the point. So for, for part B, you get your point if you leap through the non time. So that means your for loop is going up to none, num or the input parameter. You also get a point if you call play and get score. You get a point if you compare the score to the max or another score. Um, that's what we did when we were checking the score versus the max and updating the high score to if it's greater than. Also, you will get a point if you identify the max score and you return that max score. So you're getting points. You're getting, you can get up to nine points um, for each question. And yeah.